Despite all their troubles of late, Bayern Munich through then to the quarterfinals of the Champions League. For more on this, Frank Lebuff is with us, as is uh, Jan Arget Fjortov. Um, overall, Ali, there wasn't a lot of quality on show, mm. really, in the 90 minutes here, but Bayern won't care. They're through. First and foremost, they're through. Yeah. And this was very much a question coming into this match because of the ongoing struggles of Bayern Munich. This is a team that was coming into this match with one win, one win yeah. in their last five games. And so, look, the struggles are real for Bayern Munich. And what I like today from Bayern Munich is something that we haven't seen all that often this season is that there was intensity throughout. Not, not necessarily great level of play, not necessarily a great performance, but intensity throughout. Energy, aggression, guys like Musiala tracking back and defending, guys like Leroy Sané tracking back and defending, guys like Harry Kane in the 90th minute winning the game 3 0, winning the ball actually in his own half, deep in his own half. We don't see this very often, haven't seen this very often from Bayern Munich this season. Today we saw a team that was pressing higher the field, was creating turnovers, forcing turnovers creating some chances, half chances. Eventually, they open things up. They score three goals. They win it. But, of course, we cannot analyze this game and the performance of Bayern Munich without saying, what about that chance by Chiro Immobile? Yeah. And how may that have changed the reality of that stadium, the reality of Bayern Munich, the reality of this match? It didn't happen. Chiro Immobile doesn't put his chance away. It allowed Bayern Munich to breathe. And once they did that, they were able to open up the score and went on and ran away with it. You take a look at all the opponents that Bayern Munich could have faced at this mm. stage. Lazio were a gift, really. Get that second leg before. I mean, how they won the first game, I'm not quite sure. Bayern Munich obviously didn't play particularly well. But it all worked out nicely for Bayern today. Yeah. They were very narrow up the front. I think we're going to hear Thomas Tuchel talk about that. They didn't play with too much width. They were quite narrow. They were patient. And they could be patient because Chiro Mobley didn't take that chance. So they just built up that bit of pressure. And once they scored the first goal, you always knew they were going to go and get the second and maybe that third. Uh, very much a banana skin avoided then for Bayern Munich, Jan. Absolutely. But crisis at Bayern. What crisis? They're in the quarterfinal <laughs> of the Champions League. Hey, you they play Lazio any... every day. You they, will never have a they crisis. Will, <laughs> they will get an easy draw in the next round. They will get a winner between PSV Eindhoven and Dortmund. They're in the semi-final and Tuchel will win the Champions League again. But yes, <laughs> it, it's um, like the William Shakespeare said, it's to be or not to be today for Tuchel. And he saved his position. If he had lost today, if Immobile, like the boys are talking about, that chance would be taken and they were knocked out, he would have lost his job. But with a hurricane in form, always scoring the goals uh, and... And uh, De Ligt, uh, uh, that was the inner Marco van Basten, wasn't it? Uh, in the same city that van Basten yes. did in 1988 with his volley there. In, and yes. Yeah, but I like the way Bayern tried today because now they've been criticised for not playing for the coach, not having the intensity. There was a smile and everything with Tuchel today. So this was a great win for them. And like I said, he's in the quarter finally. At least he's got a job guarantee now till the quarterfinal. I think there were some good performances today. I also uh, will add Thomas Müller was always there, was always involved. What he did on the first goal there, reaching the ball, heading the ball back to Guerrero, that was a second, second, great class it was. It was very solid today, like the old team, I would say. They, very, they were very disciplined, they worked hard. As Ali said, you know, they, they worked also when they didn't have the ball, and especially the, the, the three at front. Uh, so it was a, a very good performance for Bayern Munich and a very, I was very surprised because I, I don't really follow the Bundesliga and I only listen to what people are saying about uh, the big mess, the big, big crisis in, in Bayern Munich tonight. They were there, they worked together and it was a great performance for them. Yeah. <laughs> All I'm hearing is they tried. Yeah. Great. Well done. <laughs> that's, your, that's your job. If you're Manchester City, if you're Arsenal, Real Madrid, you're not looking at Bayern Munich and worrying at all, are you? Well, no, because I think you can affect the way that Bayern Munich plays and you can affect the moments of transition defensively for Bayern Munich in which they're always vulnerable. Even today, in the few moments of transition that Lazio had, you could get the idea and the sense that, you know, may maybe, maybe there is something here for Lazio and we, we establish how poor of a team do we think at this level of Champions League Lazio really is. And yeah, you you're not afraid. Of Bayern Munich. And, and let me just say, this is not specific to Champions League. Even teams in Bundesliga, 
this season are not afraid of Bayern Munich. There is a reason as to why Joshua Kimmich has now been pushed out to the right back position, and it is simply because Thomas Tuchel doesn't feel that he can do the job as a number six. Why is that? Because teams that are no longer intimidated by Bayern Munich are no longer standing off for Joshua Kimmich. They're going and pressing. And I'm, we're going to play in your face. And what has happened? He's turning the ball over. And I think that's something that superior teams can do to Bayern Munich. You press them, you push them back, you create moments of transition, you can expose them. However, however, if you have Harry Kane and he's hot, you got a chance. If you have Leroy Sané and he's hot, when he's hot, whenever that is, mm -hmm. you have a chance. They have enough individuals, Jamal Musial, another guy, enough individuals that in a moment, in a critical moment, they can get you out of trouble. The problem is, yeah, but in the Ali, back line, they, they also have issues defending. And when they have issues defending, they can get exposed. Uh, and we heard after the game, didn't we, Jan, Thomas Tuchel uh, revealing that he thinks he's broken his toe because he yeah. gave such a stirring pre-match speech. Such was the excitement that he kicked the wall and the wall won. To understand uh, Bayern Munich, <laughs> you, must say, you must say that with all the interviews after the game, there have not been eight or nine from the management and the boards who have been doing uh, interviews, and they've been very, very proud of Thomas Tuchel, who had a motivation speech in the dressing room, and he got so engaged as he kicked oh his foot goodness. in the door uh, at, <laughs> in the Bayern dressing room and hurt his toe. So that was the reason why Thomas Tuchel was not running around in the, in the area, the coaching area today, because he hurt his toe. So they now got a manager or a coach that gives everything for the team. That's how simple football is. And boys, we look forward to the final when Bayern Munich will be there and scared, scare you, all of you, Bayern Munich. Uh, that's very much tongue-in-cheek, isn't it, Mr... F <laughs> <laughs> because that's silly. That is silly, but you see the Champions League this season, when you compare it with last season, there is a lot of weak, weak teams. Uh, they played the ninth in La Liga, uh, sorry, in Serie A today, Lazio. Uh, PSV and Dortmund, I've talked about them. There is a lot of, there, there is a road, there is a road to Wembley somewhere. And if you find that road in some good draws, you can see with a Harry Kane and with a better Bayern to just concentrate on the Champions League now. Don't be surprised if they go all the way to the final. Just see, just see. Uh, Robert, this is why you didn't make it very far in coaching. You never broke your toe kicking a wall. That's obviously the difference. <laughs> obviously the difference. That's what's happened. <laughs> but I like what Ali was saying about the defensive side of the game. Can we talk about Tuchel breaking his toe? Not really, please? no. Because like, what, so why, hasn't, why hasn't he done that in the previous games in the league <laughs> well, when, when they've been unmotivated? So, so uh, the, the quarterfinals, you're breaking his hand. Yeah. Like, uh, you make it to the semi-finals. I mean, uh, you know, what, what, what part of your anatomy so, so, do you need to Some break? players... There's a great quote by Bill Shankly. If you need to, if you look at the motivated players, yes, and you look at them and think, what can I do with them? If you need to motivate them, get rid of them. Right. Your manager shouldn't need to motivate. He should be there to talk about the tactics, talk about the understanding of what he wants from his team, talk about how you're going to progress to get into the next round and how you're going to cause the opposition problem. You don't need to be kicking the doors. When managers used to do that, I used to just laugh. I think, uh, what the hell is he doing? Frank, have you experienced uh, managers kicking things to get you going? Um, yes, I did, uh, uh, kind of a blackboard, you know, and uh, smashing it, uh, falling down and uh, showing that he's very upset and motivated. Well, I, I, I was like, uh, I was like, sure, I, I didn't need that, but I can understand for that for some players, it can be a boost. And I, I like the, uh, the involvement of a, of a coach that really believes on what he explains and he wants the, the, the players to follow him. Uh, so I'm, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not uh, against that. And uh, I think it's nice for a coach who already knows that he's going to leave to be that involved, let's say. Uh, okay. But uh, I would just want to come back to what Ali, Ali said about uh, uh, Bayern being good and, uh, and Kimmich not uh, good, be, be playing uh, in the middle of the park because they don't, they don't press, the opponent don't, don't press uh, Bayern anymore. I don't understand Lazio. What did Lazio the whole 90 minutes, except that chance that Chiro Immobile had? Yeah. Why did he don't go for it? Why uh, they were so down in the game where they were waiting for Bayern, where you, oh, as you explained, Ali, you, we know that the big problem for Goreska, Pavlovic, and or Kimmich is when you press them, it never happened. It's like they, were, they came here waiting for something which, of course, would never happen. Uh, of course, Thomas Tuchel will be leaving at the end of the season. Speculation, if you lost today's game, then that would be it. Xavi Alonso, very much the favourite mm. to come in and replacement. So part of the interview process now will be what 
part of your body will you break to manage Bayern, Jan, to show that passion? <laughs> well, first of all, the news about Sabi Alonso choosing Bayern instead of Liverpool is wrong. That is a right. false report. Sabi Alonso is smart enough to say nothing. He's the only one in this process saying nothing. Klopp won't be the new manager this summer. That is for 100% sure. He will take a year out. But Sabi Alonso, the most likely thing with Sabi Alonso now is that he will stay at Leverkusen. I'm not saying he will do that, but it's just the most probable thing that will happen now. And just be, um, we have to know that in 2025, the Real Madrid job will be ready as well. And Sabi Alonso is so smart. If you see his career, he started being under-14 coach at Real Madrid. Then he went to Sociedad, played a second team then. So he will. There is a lot of coaches going too early to big clubs. And Sabi Alonso will sit down and he will analyze and see where can I do something. Will he go to after Klopp? Whoever will come after Klopp will be tough. Uh, going to Bayern with FC Hollywood, is that the right thing now? Because together with Max Ebel and Christoph Freund, you have to build a new team, a new culture, a new identity. And you are with the reigning champion Leverkusen going into the Champions League. So for the moment, most likely that Xavi Alonso will stay at Bayer Leverkusen. Are you manipulating the odds? Because there's one anomaly when you take a look at that list. And that's your boy Solskjaer. How come he's so sure? How come he's linked to this job, Jan? We've talked about bets before, haven't we, and, and, and odds. There is no chance that they will do an interim now anyway. They will find then so they won't take a big name in to do an interim coach just before the summer. So it's, it's, it's false. This is how, how the media works at the moment. We all Stupid we all media part of it. Us. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. We, I, and I said, you heard my last, next sentence. We are all a part of that. We do those kind of things. But the only one. I haven't said anything, is Alonso. Max Eberl, the new head of sports at Bayern, said before the game today, specifically, we have not talked to Alonso. Is this their wish candidate? Of course he is, because he fits the bill. But so far, nothing has happened. So, Robbo, three boxes. Mm. Bayern Leverkusen, Liverpool or Bayern Munich? Which uh, one are you choosing? I would say, personally, that he should stay at Bayern Leverkusen for another season. Why? Because, as Jan just said, he's, he's done a lot of things before he's come to Leverkusen, but he's done a fantastic job there. I think he should just stay another year and still keep learning and still keep making the right decisions and then take the next job when it suits him. I'm not sure now is the right time. But you might not ever be in this situation again. He will be in the right situation. He'll get a chance again. No, no doubt about that. He's, right. a, he's a top-class coach. Huh?